Hello and welcome back to another video. So I'm starting a new series all about clinically simplifying everything. So what today's topic is going to be rheumatoid arthritis and we will look at it from a very simplistic clinical perspective where everything important you need to know is right here for you and let's just get started. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and uh, leave a like or a comment if this is helpful. So what is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune inflammatory chronic disease. Now every single word in that sentence is very important. Autoimmune, inflammatory and chronic. So it is kind of like it is a progressive disease. OK, um, chronic, the changes appear chronically and uh, progressively. And they start off with kind of systemic signs as well, such as fever and malaise. And we will get into that. There is also antibody production against the joints. OK. Um, and these can be then detected on lab value. It's a persisting, symmetrical, inflammatory arthroplasty. So persisting and the key word here is symmetrical. When it comes to um, later on differentiating rheumatoid arthritis from osteoarthritis, this will be very, very crucial. OK, so just remember, this is symmetrical. It affects the small joints. Rheumatoid arthritis affects the small peripheral joints and it does so in a symmetrical way. And that is a key, key giveaway. It affects females to males more so uh, at a ratio of about two to one. Now, why does that make sense? We have to always be thinking critically. And the reason why it makes sense is because autoimmune conditions are typically more common in women than men, in females than males. Uh, and it is to a very high ratio here, two to one. Now, uh, painful, swollen, stiff hands and feet in the morning are a classic sign of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the thing is, um, this kind of lasts for, firstly, it lasts for um, more than one hour, typically, uh, the stiffness in the morning. And the reason why this is, is because rheumatoid arthritis occurs because when the joints are moving, when in mobility they are they don't hurt as as much they're not as stiff they're better they get better with mobility however um so they get better in the evening but when the patient wakes up in the morning they feel stiffness okay look out for deformity because it is a key giveaway physical sign you do not want to miss that on the physical exam OK, um, some important points for rheumatoid arthritis, OK, that you really need to take away is that it uh, the joints that it affects. Yes, it's small joints. Yes, it affects the hands and the feet more so, um, but it mainly affects. So this picture is from this source and it mainly affects the metacarpophalangeal joints here, metacarpophalangeal, as well as the PIPs, which is the proximal interphalangeal joints. As you can see here, it says rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and while it affects the metacarpal phalangeal, the proximal interphalangeal and the wrist, it does not tend to affect the DIPs, which are the distal interphalangeal joints. So it is not in DIPs. This is very important because once again, it will help us uh, as clinicians, as doctors, as student doctors to then differentiate from osteoarthritis. OK, which I will make on the next video. What are the signs you need to be aware of clinically? Clinical signs straight away, ulnar deviation. What is ulnar deviation? I have a picture right here. Ulnar deviation is when, um, because you've got these autoantibodies and you've got this chronic inflammation, you've got all of this, you've got all of the inflammatory cells coming in, you've got everything. What is another, whenever you have inflammation, you have those signs, remember, you have those um, signs, dolor, I'm not going to write them, dolor, which is uh, pain, Tumor, calor, rubor. So redness, uh, warm, the heat, pain, um, tumor and enlargement, as well as loss of function eventually. So when you have those signs, when you have this chronic inflammation, eventually you are going to get um, swelling in the joints, swelling in the metacarpal phalangeal joints as well. And that swelling is going to displace 
That is what ulnar deviation is. It is displacement. It is displacement due to the swelling, due to the uh, inflammatory swelling, displacement of the fingers. And it will be in the direction towards the little finger, towards your tiny pinky finger, okay? So that is, um, remember, radius always on the side of the thumb, ulnar always on the side of the little finger. So you have this ulnar deviation, which just means due to the swelling, you have um, displacement of these fingers, and they kind of move, shift, this is also known as ulnar shift, towards the little finger. Now, what else do you have? You have swan neck, uh, boutonniere deformities of the fingers, you have Z deformity of the thumb, and you have wasting of the thumb. Now, um, so when it comes to the swan neck, uh, when it comes to the boutonniere deformity of the thumb, this uh, occurs typically in, in the thumb, as it says, and the boutonniere deformity is simply that the proximal joint moves towards the palm, and the distal joint moves in the opposite direction, so away from the palm. That's all it is, boutonniere. One moves towards the palm, one moves away from the palm. Okay, what about the swan neck deformity? Okay, swan neck deformity is occurs in these phalangeal joints over here, it occurs in the fingers. And it's when this, um, when the same joint over here, when the initial, when the first part of it is bent, but the ends of the fingers are completely straight, okay? So that's what a swan neck deformity is. Here there's a bend and here it's straight. Here there's a bend and here it's straight. And this is easier to see in real life when you see on a patient. But those are the key findings that you need to be aware of and you will be asked when you go to the wards. Okay. Let's go straight into, oh, okay, wait, let's go into a clinical case uh, before we go straight into the investigations. What is the clinical presentation? This is a 55-year-old woman, 55 year old woman. Now, uh, 55 year old commonly occurs, rheumatoid arthritis commonly occurs in the fifth decade of life. Woman, again, more in females than males, three to one. Smoker. Well, smoking actually is kind of like a risk factor and in, uh, increases the chances of uh, auto antibodies, um, auto antibodies that we will come on to later on sorry for that, and it presents with joint pain. Worse in the morning, remember, you're always looking out for what time does the pain improve, what time does the pain worsen, remember your Socrates, okay, and she also has a history of fit fever and fatigue. Now, I did mention this a little bit, there are extra articular, they're known as extra articular, extra just means outside, articular just means joint, so typically rheumatoid arthritis, yes, it has all of these joint manifestations, these joint clinical symptoms. But when it comes to the fever fatigue malaise, it does also present with um, systemic signs. OK, and it involves the metacarpal phalangeal joints and the proximal interphalangeal symmetric joint pain. OK, I have emphasized, I can't emphasize this enough. You're looking for the symmetric joint pain. OK, now, hope that's clear. Let's move on to your investigations. You are looking for x-ray findings. Your x-ray findings are going to be soft tissue enlargement. So you're looking around the joints because rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune inflammatory condition in which autoantibodies are produced against the joints and it's all to do with um, it's also to do with this whole citrullination process, which is when an arginine gets replaced with a citrulline, something like that. And that will be relevant when we come to these autoantibodies. But here, what are we looking for in x-ray? We're looking for a soft tissue enlargement. We're also looking for a reduction in the joint space. Soft tissue enlargement, reduction in the joint space. There will be some, some, some level of synovial fluid there too. And joint erosions as well as osteopenia. You might then ask, how are we supposed to see osteopenia on x-ray? And I'll tell you how. Normally on x-ray, we are looking for solid white, which represents the bone, of course. Here in osteopenia, we will have a reduction in the white around the joint. So be aware, where is it happening and what is happening? Where is it happening? It's happening around the joint. What is happening?